everyone, welcome to Gateball Referee Info Centre. Today we're going to be practicing and indeed I'm going to be explaining perhaps one of the most underrated shots in all of Gateball which can probably lead to you winning a game or perhaps may have led to you winning a game that you didn't perhaps see the line uh, happening with. Uh, this skill doesn't really have a name actually, but I guess I'm going to call it the jump roll shot or jump spin shot perhaps. It's incredibly easy, it's far easier than a jump touch, but practicing these will greatly assist your ability to perform jump touches. I'm going to pose you a situation. You're playing ball number five, this is ball number six here, so ball number five is the white ball, ball number six is the, uh, ball number five is the red ball here, ball number six is the white ball. We're going for gate number three with ball number five. As you can see, I'm on the wrong side of gate number three. Time has been called. I have one turn playing ball number five to score one point. Otherwise, the white team is going to win. So I need to score this one point. Now, how can I get to the front of gate three without sliding over there? Now, of course, you could slide. I mean. You could catch the very left hand side over here, or the right hand side, sorry, of the six ball and try to get somewhere over there. It's an incredibly tough shot and the angle on the gate is going to be absolutely horrendous. You could try coming off the right hand side, but again, you're just creating a larger distance. Well, this is where this skill comes in. There's two ways that we can do this skill. The first is the way that I do it, which is to the side, playing a golf Japanese style. And the second one is between the legs. We're gonna go through both of them, but I'm gonna bring the camera over in the next shot, and I'm gonna show you exactly what's happening in depth. See, we're now on the front side of gate number three. Spark number six out of the field. Number six was next to play, but time's been called. Go through the gate to win the game. Perfect. So let's uh, take that all in depth and I'll show you how to do it. Rightio, so how do we do this skill? One that's incredibly important and I think that one that's going to benefit a lot of people really rapidly because the skill's easy to learn and there's a lot of room for error or a high margin of error with this one. So how do we do this skill? It's a really great skill, it's easy to learn, there's a very low amount of error that can occur so the way that we do this is very similar to a jump touch, except I'd call it more of a half jump touch because the ball doesn't necessarily have to jump up like in the example that I did. The ball can indeed, the stroker's ball that is, strike the object ball or the other ball and then through inertia and spin be able to be propelled forward. It doesn't really matter if we jump here, it just matters that our stroker's ball gets forward. So in turn, all we're trying to do is create large amounts of forward spin. How do we create this spin? Well, we use it through an inclining of the stick. The best, one, the best way to do these is to get the hands very far down the stick. This allows us to have greater control. We're performing it in this demonstration with the Japanese style of stance. I've got my left foot relatively forward. It doesn't really matter where, but relatively forward. But you can see that the red ball, in this case the stroker's ball, is somewhere between the middle of my stance. Now you can have the ball anywhere you like. The reason I have it in the middle of my stance is because I always put it in the middle of my stance. The key with these is that taking away weather conditions and other things like that, like court materials, if you have your feet in the same place every time, your hands in the same place every time, then adjusting for court, depth, for court uh, slowness or quickness as well as humidity will make all of the difference. It'll make it much easier. So we put our hands far down the stick. We then place it around pointing somewhere between one o'clock and two o'clock on a clock face on the stroker's ball here. And then I like to do these with almost entirely wrists. And the reason for that is if we take a big stroke like this, we're very likely to jump way too high. We're only making it jump about, you know, we, it doesn't even need to jump over the six, remember. It's just gaining some spin and inertia. Right, so all we're gonna do is a little punch, rotate or flicking the wrists here, you can punch it into the six, like that. 
and that was a perfect example of the ball not necessarily the five that is the five not necessarily jumping over the six you can see the six went much further than the five so it didn't jump over it but the five gained enough spin and inertia so that it was able to get across and onto the front side of gate number three so from there we could perform the exact same thing as in the first example practice this practice 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 this is a shot that comes up a lot more often than you'd think in gate ball and it's great to know that this is much easier to do when you've mastered it than a slide is there's a lot more variability in a slide than this one so all we need to do for this one the key points that we need to remember uh, and by the way the balls are about oh, 20 to 23 centimeters apart maybe 25 the only thing we need to remember here is that we're striking the ball between one and two o'clock with a punching motion with the wrists. You can see that my arms are pretty much staying in the same place. It's just a punching motion with the wrists. Go, Ooh, just. Should be able to, yep, should be able to get through there. Wonderful. Punching motion with the wrists to get the ball spinning forward, creating that forward spin. Note that today I've got a lot of dew on the lawn, so it's probably a lot harder to do it this morning only because the balls grip. The minute they hit the grass, they just stop. So you need to add a little bit more punch on a lawn that's very quick, such as a bowling green. You probably only have to just barely knock it and the thing will just go flying. So in the next segment, I'm just gonna show you how to do it between your legs or in the croquet style, but the principles are exactly the same. Radio. So we're just going to do a description of how to do this between the legs. A lot of people prefer to do it between the legs, probably because I do find some hesitance between people who play croquet style and then want to play all my specialty shots, or at least I didn't invent them, but the shots that I describe, uh, which I play to the side. I play between the legs with Chinese style, as mentioned before in the grip video. Um, but then for most other shots, I'm playing to the side. But that's just because I feel comfortable. Right, so how do we do this shot between the legs? It's exactly the same. You're gonna adopt the normal grip that you have. Solomon grip's gonna be really hard with this. So if you've got a Solomon grip, you're probably gonna to have to stick at it a little bit longer than usual. Uh, and also for this, we don't have to be so far down the stick. We can be a little bit higher up because we're a little bit more upright. Radio, so we're going to stalk the ball and approach it normally, taking our normal stance, angling between one and two o'clock, and then giving the five a nice little punch with the wrists and a little bit of arm. As you can see, I fell well short. I don't practice between the legs very often. So let's try doing it again. And the key with this is that it's all about practice. Lots and lots of practice. There we go. Perfect. So now we're on the front side of the gate and we can do exactly what we need to do to win the game as in the first example. I really hope you've enjoyed the video today. I hope to see some people in Australia perhaps using this one a little bit more often. And don't think that a slide is your only option. There are lots of shots we can play in gate ball and often slides are not the best option given the certain circumstances. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe and pop any comments that you like in the comments section with any video recommendations. Thanks for watching Gate Ball Referee Info Centre and let's play ball.